In this tutorial, I'll show you four different methods for adding decals to objects in Blender. And I'll have timestamps in the video description, so if you just want to jump to a certain method for adding decals, you can use the timestamps in the description or in the YouTube timeline. So the first method is adding the decal within the object's material. So I have a cube here, and I just applied a concrete material to it. So I'll go to the Add menu, I'm going to search for the Image Texture. We'll drop the image text right here, and then I'll click on open. And here's the decal that I'll be using. This is an image I downloaded from Pixabay, and link will be in the description if you want to download it. So I'll just open up this image. Now, if for some reason it changed the image to UDIM tiles, you just want to click on this and make sure it's set to a single image. Now this decal that I'm using has alpha transparency, so this way I can overlay it over the concrete texture and the concrete texture will show up underneath the texture. So to mix in the texture, I'm going to first mix into the base color. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix color, which can be used to mix two colors together. So I'll put the mix color here after the base color. So what I'm going to do is take the color here and we'll put it into color A, and then this base color here, this is going to go into color B. So you can see it's now just mixing the two textures together. And if I drag the factor, it's only going to use the decal or it's only going to use the concrete. So I need a mask to tell it where the concrete's going to be and where the decal is going to be. Well, if I control shift and select this image texture twice, we have this alpha here. And so the alpha is going to be black where it's transparent. So we can put the alpha into the factor. And then if I control shift, select the mix to preview it, you can see one part is going to be the texture and the other part is going to be the decal. Now we need to flip it because right now the texture is opposite. So we actually want to take this color here, put that into color A, and then we want to take the decal color and we're going to put that into color B. So I now want to edit the UVs to move around the decal. Now this concrete texture is already using the UV map of the object. And so I don't want to move around the concrete texture, but I do want to move around the decal. So I'm going to create two different UV maps. So if I open up the side panel here and go to the object data properties, I can open up the UV maps and I'll click on the plus here to make a new UV map. And this one I can just call decal UV or whatever you want to call it. So we now have two different UV maps. Now what I can do is just tell this image to use the new UV map. So if I go to the add menu, I'm going to search for the UV map node and let's drop this here. And if I click on this here, I can select the decal UV and I'll put the UV into the vector. Just so that it's very clear which UV map we're using, I can duplicate this UV map and instead of using the texture coordinate here, I can delete this and I can click here and change this back to the default UV map and I'll put this into this mapping. And then the mapping is plugged up to all the concrete textures. So the concrete's using the first UV map, but the decal is using the second UV map. So now we just need to edit the second UV map. So I'm going to click here to go to the UV editing workspace and if I scroll right over here, I'm going to click on on the UV map and I'll change it to decal UV. Now I can select this UV map and I can scale it and I can rotate it and I can move it around. And if I go into the material preview of the object, we can now move around the decal. Now the problem is that it's tiling so I can see many of the textures. So if I go back here to the shading workspace on this texture here, I want to click on the repeat and change it to clip instead. And now it's just going to use one of the textures. So let's go back here to the UV editing and I'll just preview the texture. So let's just go to front view. So here's the front view. So I need to move this down here like this, and then let's rotate it. You can move the UV map over here and kind of scale it. And there we go. We now have the UV map on the object. So that's how you mix it into the base color. And if you want to, you can also mix it into other maps like the roughness map and the normal map. So let's say I'm going to put it into the roughness map, but I want to be more shiny where the decal is. So to do this, I can duplicate this mix node. So duplicate the mix color node and drop it here after the roughness. So then we're going to use the same alpha here. So the alpha is the black and white image. So it's going to be the mask. So we're going to put that into the factor. So now if I kind of look around here and look at the reflections, if I take color B and turn this up and down, you can see that's going to be the reflection of the decal. Because if I control shift and select the mix to preview it, here is the roughness map for the concrete. It's just kind of a white gray color. But then color B here is going to be the color for the roughness of just the decal. If I turn it down and make it more black, it's going to be more shiny. Or if I turn it up, it's going to be more rough. Now one other thing I could do is I could mix it into the normal map and I could make it so that there isn't any bumping on the decal. So to do this, let's move the normal map over and I'll select the mix color node and I'll duplicate it and drop it right down here. And I'll just control shift and select it to preview what it's doing. So what I want to do is just get rid of the normal map where the decal is. So again, I can take this alpha here from the decal and I'll put that into the factor. And then I can take color B and I can just make it fully white. 
Now we're going to take the mixed result and we're going to put that into the normal map. So just make sure it's going into the normal map. And if I control shift and select the normal map, now you can see the texture is really bumpy where the concrete is, but it's really smooth where the decal is. So if I control shift, select the principal shader, you can see the decal is smooth, even though the concrete is rough. Now, if I want to, I could also add a very small bump along the corners of the decal. So to do this, I can search for a bump node and we'll put it here after the normal map. And then I can take the decal alpha and I'm going to put that into the height value of this bump. And then the normal map is going into the normal. So now if you look here on the edges, if you like zoom in really close, you can see it looks like there's a tiny little bit of a bump there and I can adjust that strength there with the bump strength. Now, if you zoom in really close, you can see that there's some pixels here. So to get rid of those pixels, what you can do is go back up here to the decal and you can take the linear type here and you can change it to cubic instead. And now you can see that it doesn't look quite as pixelated. The edge there looks a bit more smooth. So if I zoom out kind of far away, you can see it looks like the decal is just popping out a little bit because the edge has a little bit of bump. And the second method for adding decals is using the shrink wrap modifier. So what I'll do is press shift A, we'll go down to image and I'm gonna add a mesh plane and just select the decal and click on import images as planes. So I'll move the decal over and I'm gonna rotate the decal by 90 degrees and then just kind of bring it back here and maybe scale it up. So now I wanna shrink wrap this image here onto this sphere. Now in order to shrink wrap this and make it nice and smooth, I need to subdivide it. So I'll go into edit mode, I'll press control E and I'll click on subdivide and and then if I click right behind me on the subdivide settings, I'll turn up the number of cuts to maybe like a 60 or maybe even like a 90, something like that. So it's pretty detailed. So let's go back to object mode. We'll go here to the modifiers and here on the modifiers, we're going to search for the shrink wrap modifier and we'll click on the target object here, click on the eyedropper and choose the sphere. So now you can see it's shrink wrapping to the sphere. Now I want to bring it out a little bit because right now it's kind of going through the sphere. So right here on the snap mode, we're going to change this to above surface. So it's like above. And then here on the offset, I can turn this to like a 0 0.002. So you can see if I drag the offset, it's going to bring it out or push it back in. So by turning it to a 0 0.002, it's going to be slightly above the object surface. Now there's a problem with this. If I kind of zoom in here, you can see it's looking kind of wobbly and that doesn't really look nice. And also right here, you can see it's shaded flat. So let's use the object context menu and shade it smooth. So the faces there look smooth. So to fix the stretching and to make it not quite as warped, we can move the objects. So you can move the object around and when it gets closer to the object that is being shrink wrapped onto, it's not quite as warped. Now, if you want to move around the decal and customize where it is, then what you can do is use the snapping. So you can use the snapping feature to kind of move it around the object surface. Because right now, if I just try to move it by hitting G to grab, you can see it's distorting the mesh and it's kind of getting squished here and that doesn't really look correct. So we'll click on this button here to turn on the snapping. And if I turn on the snapping, it's going to move around by increments. So instead of it being moved around by increments, we're going to click on the settings. And instead of increment, we're going to use face instead. This way, it's going to snap to the object's face. And then also let's click here on the settings and on the snap base, we're going to choose center. This will work better. So now when I move it around, it's going to snap to the center of the object and that's working a lot better. Now, when I move the decal, I also want it to rotate instead of just being moved because you can see it's kind of getting stretched and warped. So let's go back to the settings and we're going to choose move and rotate here on the effect and that's going to make it work a little bit better. But I also want it to point upwards with the rotation of the normals of the circle object. So if I go back here to the settings, we can choose the align rotation to target. Now when I hit G to grab and move the decal around, it is snapping to the face orientation of the sphere. And I can scale it, rotate it, and move it around, and it's working quite well. Now after you place the decal, maybe you don't want to have to worry about the decal and you just want to be able to select your object and kind of move it around and not even have to think about the decal. Well, if I just select the object and move it around, the decal is not going to move with it. So an easy way to fix this is to select the decal, then shift select the sphere, hit control P, and we can set parent to object. Now, if I select the sphere and move it around, the decal is going to move with the sphere. Now, also, you might want to make the decal non-selectable so you don't accidentally select it and move it around. Let's also turn off the snapping here because we don't need that anymore. So to make it so that you can't move the decal around, you can open up the outliner here. And if you click on this funnel icon, let's choose the selectable. So click on selectable. We can now open up the collection and open up the sphere. And we can just click on this little arrow here. And that way we can't select the decal. So if I try to select it, I can't select it. So that's one way to make it so you don't accidentally move around the decal. Another way to do this is to make it so the decal is within the same object. 
So let's click on this button here again so we can select the decal. And then on the shrink wrap modifier, we're going to click on the drop down arrow and apply the modifier. So now if I go into edit mode, it's actual geometry. So if I select the decal and shift select the sphere, I can hit control J. And now you can see it's all one object. So that fixes the issue as well. Now the third method for adding decals is to use the stencil brush in Blender's texture painting mode. So again, I have a cube here with a concrete texture. And if I go into edit mode, you can see I have UV unwrapped the cube. I just hit U and did the smart UV project. And because we're doing texture painting, it's very important that you UV unwrap this correctly. So make sure that you don't have any overlapping UVs. This looks pretty good. And also make sure that the texture isn't going out of the size of the texture. Because if it's too big, then it's going to be overlapping. Because when the texture ends down here, it's going to pop down here. We can now go over here to Blender's texture painting mode. And I'm going to close this panel here. If you hit the T key to open up the side panel, let's click here to use the draw brush. And then also, if you click right up here, make sure you are using the color map of your object because we want to paint this on top of the color map. So right over here, we have the brushes and I want to duplicate this to make a new brush for the decal. So we'll click on this button here to duplicate it. And if I click on the name, I'll just call it decal. So you can see we now have two different brushes. So now we can change the settings of the decal brush. Now right here on the color, make sure this is fully white. That is important when you're texture painting decals. Let's open up the texture here and I'll click on new to add a new texture. Then I'm going to click on this button here to go to the texturing panel and I'll click on open to open up a texture. I'll just locate to the fire alert texture and then open that image. And then also right here on the source, if it's set to UDIM tiles, you want to make sure you change it back to single image instead. So we'll now click right back here to the active tool and workspace settings. And I'm going to scroll down here to the texture type. And on the mapping here, we want to change it from tile to stencil instead. So now that it's set to stencil, if I move my mouse in the 3D viewport, you can see there's the stencil brush. Now, if I right click and drag, that is going to move the stencil around. If I shift right click and drag, that is going to scale it. And if I control right click and drag, that's going to rotate it. And then of course, I can just move my view to move it around. Now, if I click here and start to drag along here and paint this, you can see we're painting in the decal. But if I move over here to see the decal, you can see some of it is fading away. So I have to make sure I go along here and paint the entire decal. So an easy way to fix this is to just go up here to the fall off settings of the brush. And instead of it being custom, which is going to be smooth on the edges, we're going to change it to constant instead. You can then go here to the radius and make the radius really big so your brush is really big. And now you can just go along here and just with one click you can add the decal. So it's kind of like we're stamping this on like a stamp or a sticker. And if I open up the image editor here, you can see here is the image stamped on to that base color. So once you're done stamping all the textures, to save this image with the decals, you can click on image and click on save as. And I'll just call this concrete with decals color map and just turn up the quality here, just save it as a JPEG and save that image. And it's very important that you save that image because if you don't save the image, Blender's not going to store that new texture data. So I can click here to go back to the shading workspace and there's the decals stamped on our object. Now the last method for adding decals is using a really great Blender add-on called Decal Master. So I've used this add-on myself and I can highly recommend it. It's a really great Blender add-on and I actually have a full add-on review video. So if you want to check out that review video, the link will be in the description. And I also have an affiliate link to the add-on on the Blender market. So if you purchase the add-on through my link, then I'll earn a small commission. So that's a great way to help support this channel. So if you've purchased the add-on, once you've downloaded and installed the add-on, you can hit the N key to open up the side panel. You can scroll down here and click on the DCL master for decal master. You can click on add DCL setup for decal setup, and then you can click on start projecting. So this will open up a new window in Blender, and you can see right behind me there's a bunch of different shortcuts, and you can also move this around, and there's going to be a placeholder decal. Now to add a decal or import a decal, you can press the F key. You can just locate to where you've saved your decals. So I'll click on this and just click on import decal. And then I can move the decal around by moving my view. And I can also hit S to scale the decal and R to rotate the decal. Now when I want to place the decal, I can hit the space bar and that's going to place the decal so I can easily just place it along like stamps or stickers. Then when I'm done placing the decal, I can just hit the escape key to go out of this full window. 
and I can go into the rendered viewport mode or the material preview to see the decal. Now I cover the add-on in much more detail in my full add-on review video, but you can see you can actually manage the decals after you add them. So I can click on these little arrows here and that's gonna jump to the decals. I can delete a decal if I want to by clicking on the trash can right there, or I can also click on this eye here and that is going to hide the decal or show the decal. And then there's a bunch of different settings here. So I can change the location, the scale and the rotation. I can also add some cool VFX nodes. And there's some other things like some damage, some tears or scratches, and a bunch of different things that I can do to the decal. I can also like change the decal opacity so I can make it less visible or more visible. And there's just a bunch of different settings that you can play around with. And I go into more detail in my full add-on review video. So again, definitely check that out with the link in the description if you're interested. So those are the four different methods for adding decals in Blender. So they all have different pros and cons, so you can really just use whichever one works best for your current project. So I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.